And then we bring Salah, but most of the Quran we don't follow. Like last time that we mentioned it at one place. What's the place we were at last time? Rehab Center? I will mention, <laughs> this is, don't take it serious, it's a little joke, but it can be real. We pray Salah five times or 50 times a day. You know, we were taught in Mirage, the lesson of Mirage, that we were, the Prophet was given the first command of praying Salah 50 times when we went up. And God had reduced the five. Some of us probably pray 55 times a day. But you know what? When it comes to marriage, we forget about the Quran and Sunnah. We marry to suit ourselves, not for the pleasure of Allah. Not in the line of the Sunnah. Then we are like, hey boy, this lady is too old for me. Cancel that proposal. Couple months here. Yeah. Couple years. And we forget the Sunnah. Of 15 years old, I was going to be Jawaharlal We forget Sunnah and Quran. Huh? That Qul'in kuntu tuhibbun Allah fattabiyuni What Allah says? Qul'in kuntu tuhibbun Allah fattabiyuni Surah Ali Imran chapter 3 verse 31 if you love Allah, follow the Rasul. Suddenly we say, we ain't following the Rasul. We follow him. Malay, ma uh, wait, this is Malay, right? Is it? We follow him Malay tradition. We follow him Pakistani tradition. We follow him Bangladeshi tradition. We follow Arab tradition. We follow our traditions. We don't follow so many. But the reunion, as I said, if you love Allah, follow the Rasul. But when it comes to our nafs, we put aside Quran and Sunnah and they're following the Rasul. He said, I mean, I don't have a problem when a person say, well, I don't like the lady. There's much me. It's not compatible. Listen to this difference here. We have the choice that if you marry someone, you marry someone, you marry someone that you like. I mean, there are, there are many examples of many sisters made proposals to the Prophet and he refused it. He offered other Sahabas, go ahead, mashallah. And there were many proposals that were made to him and he accepted. So you have the choice. Yeah, you have the choice of saying, well, there is no kufu, there is no compatibility. Uh, I don't think I can live with this person. You have that choice. That's your choice. We have the choice of eating biryani, bread, lamb, beef, but we cannot condemn what we don't like. See a point? Isn't that a hadith? If you can't eat something, don't eat it. But don't let us eat the food. You can't get married to a certain person. We, we, we are not supposed to know, bring that law about and make it our Muslim practice that you don't marry people older than you. Where did that practice come from? Not from the Sunnah. We have seen in the Sunnah of the Prophet that he married people under his age, almost his age, and over his age. But when it comes to personal life, and our daughters and sons' life is how we want it, not how the Sunnah taught us. Right? And the Quran tells us to follow the Sunnah. Follow the Prophet. Whatever he did had great wisdom, great barakat that will benefit us. But sometimes our rewards and our culture blinds us when it comes to Quran and Sunnah. But we read in it 40 times in the month of Ramadan. We boast of how many khatam we have made. How many times we completed Bukhari. But we miss the point of the Sunnah in Bukhari. The Sunnah in the life of the Prophet. The message in the Quran. 
I'm only using some examples to remind myself, remind you, don't let these things happen. We have our leaf, we are weak, we can't do something, mashallah. We pray for Allah to guide us so we can do the right thing. And Allah forgive us if we didn't. But we don't let our nafs go beyond the Quran and Sunnah. You have to be careful for what we say. And I just wanted to use marriage as an example because I see that as a major problem in the world today. One of the most, one of the worst, one of the most dangerous things that is happening in the Muslim Ummah and in insan and humanity is the misconception of marriage, the wrong intention of marriage, and the whole nine yards around marriage. Those who don't want to marry, those who don't believe to get married, those who marry the wrong people, those who marry the right people and live the wrong life, a lot of complications. And then the production from that becomes fitna. A very serious problem, very serious problem. That's why the Prophet says the best amongst you is, the, who is he who is best to his family. And he said, I am best because I'm best to my family. He taught us the lifestyle with a family. How to live husband, wife, parents, children. But when it comes to that, it's not the Quran and Sunnah way, it's my way. Our way. That's not true. Not realizing that's the whole door of the house. Can you imagine that? You can have the most beautiful house. And I see you guys got some fantastic houses here. Beautiful, man. Wonderful. Beautiful. But if your family life is not happy, there is no happiness in that house. There is no sakina. It doesn't become a home. It becomes a house of bricks and walls. Bricks and walls. If you are a multi-billionaire and you have a billion dollar business and you have a top Mercedes and BMW but you don't have the right husband and you don't have the right wife, you're not going to be happy at all. Think about it. Think about it. Don't be happy. See how deep that is in Islam? That's why the Prophet ﷺ was very, very concerned of marriage. He had so many hadith, so many sayings about marriage. And that's a whole different topic. I'm not talking about, I suppose, to talk about the Quran. But it comes from the Quran. Fatta if you love Allah, then follow the Rasul. And that's why Allah designed in the Rasul's life. Because he was the messenger. And his lifestyle was a message. His lifestyle was the example that we are supposed to follow. Uswatun Hasana, as we were saying today in the khutbah. His pattern, his conduct, his lifestyle. He came to live the Quran. When Hazrat Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha was asked, tell us something about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Tell us about the Rasul. She said, he lived the Quran. So we recite the Quran. We teach the people to read the Quran. But living the Quran is where the problem is. Yeah, we pray salah, we fight, we, do, we have the pillars. But what about all the laws? I don't need to touch one law. What about all the other laws?